Hey friends, welcome out to the garden. It is a glorious day today. We are actually gonna harvest a ton of stuff today and we're gonna take those items and we're gonna go inside and we're gonna preserve them. So you're gonna see what I get to harvest. Today is May 30th and so we're just gonna spend today enjoying this beautiful weather and getting some of our fruits of our labor out from the garden and into the kitchen and into the pantry, into the freezer, which is what this is all about. This is about getting stuff out of the garden and into the pantry. So first thing we're gonna start with today is these onions. Now I've got onions that I started from seed and I have onions that I bought from Dixondale Farm. And one weird thing that I've noticed is that all the onions that are from this half of the bed over, they're starting to go to seed. They actually have flower pods on them. And the ones I started haven't yet. And ideally you don't want your onions to go to flower or to seed because those onions, when I actually go to harvest the onions, not just the greens, won't actually store as long. So we'll just need to make a mental note of that and move forward. So let's go ahead and get harvesting. I've got this whole bed to do. I've got to give everything a nice haircut. By harvesting the onion greens, it's doing two things. One, it's gonna help the energy go into creating a bigger bowl, which is what we want. The, the goal of growing onions, obviously, is to get a nice big onion bulb. But the second thing is doing is we're doubling or tripling our harvest because I'm gonna turn these green onion tops into onion top pesto. It's absolutely delicious. The, the greens of the onions are kind of sweet. Um, whatever I don't make into onion top pesto, I'll just chop up and freeze. And I loved having those in my freezer. I used them last year just like I would onions. In any recipe that called for onions, I, I would just substitute the green onion tops and it was so we got all the onion tops harvested. I'm sitting in the shade because it's super hot out here. I actually think what I'm gonna do, I've got a bunch of strawberries inside that I need canned up. I'm making strawberry jam. I think I'm gonna wait until it cools down in the day. I probably picked the worst time to come out here and try to harvest all this stuff. So we're gonna go inside, make some jam, come back and finish harvesting. Even Gizmo's too hot to be out here. We are gonna head back out to the garden. It is now 6.35. I think I was out there earlier when it was like, I don't know what time it was, but it was definitely the heat of the day and it was a little bit silly. I should not have been out there. I've got some big bowls for harvesting. My garden is mostly shaded at this point and so it's a great time to go out there. I had kind of decided that I did all that canning and I was like, I think I'm not gonna harvest this stuff. But I was reading comments and one of you guys had asked me what my plan was to do with the cilantro because I just posted it. Just a second. My shoe doesn't want to, my shoe doesn't want to go on. There we go. I just posted a garden tour video and one of you guys asked, what are you gonna do with the cilantro? And I was like, oh my gosh, the cilantro. If I don't harvest the cilantro today or tomorrow, it's gonna go bolt, it's gonna go bad, and all that work is for naught. And that's not what we're doing around here. We're growing food so that we can put it in the pantry. So thank you for the person that made that comment because you just got me off my butt and back into the garden. And it's beautiful out here now. Earlier today, I was literally melting. I was, I was kind of regretting my decision. Oh, my chickens are so cute. Okay, so let's start, or let's stop here first. This might not look like much, because this is in my flower bed, which I actually needed to get out here and cut all my daffodils back. But there's actually quite a bit of food in here. This whole section right here is oregano. There's garlic in here. So there's some garlic scapes I need to harvest. Sorry if it gets a little windy. So let's go ahead and get all this oregano harvested now. All I'm gonna do to harvest this oregano is just take handfuls. Let me get these daffodil leaves out of the way. See, this is garlic right here. There's garlic all over my property. And I'm just gonna cut it. This is a 30 quart stainless steel bowl filled to the brim with oregano. This is gonna make wonderful gifts. 
So it's saying there's elephant garlic in here. This is an elephant garlic plant. All those are elephant garlic. There's a ton in the front of my property. And a bunch of the ones in the front haven't started putting out their scapes yet, but I see two scapes here, so we're gonna get those. So I honestly don't know that much about elephant garlic, but, oh, there's a hummingbird. I was gonna try to get her for you, but I missed it. So what I was saying is I don't know that much about garlic, but there were three different kind of styles when I was digging up this garlic. The only reason I knew that there was elephant garlic on the property was because I was weeding and I was like, wow, this smells like garlic. And I actually know the previous owners of this property. So um, I grew up going to church with them. So I text the previous owner and I said, why does this smell like garlic? What is this? And she said it was elephant garlic. And so now I know throughout my property, there's elephant garlic everywhere. And there's three different things on the garlic. And when I pull up, when I dig up all this garlic, I'll show you. There's traditional elephant garlic where you get one massive garlic head where it just looks like a garlic head of garlic, but it's huge. And then there were where it looked like one plant, but instead of it being a whole head, it was just one really large bulb at the bottom. You coming over here, bud? That's Gizmo. Gizmo's my gardening buddy because he doesn't run off like my other two. I can't have my other two out here because they would be gone. But back to the garlic. So there's three things. And the third thing is there's these little baby, what look like seed garlics. And that's what they are. And I guess it takes, from the little research I did, that's what starts, that is seed garlic. And you plant that and then that is gonna grow up into the garlic where there's just the one clove and then you plant that and that's gonna give you the whole head if I understand correctly. So last year when I harvested our my garlic, I took those little seed bits and I threw those back into the ground. So right here, when I harvested this big massive clump, I took all those little bits, threw them back, dug them back up. And I think that those now are gonna be the one head garlic. We ate a ton of the garlic, but I did save a few of those one headed garlics and I planted those out in the garden. So if you've watched any of my garden tour videos, you'll know I have elephant garlic out there. And so I'm thinking, and I won't know until I dig it up, but I think those are gonna be the full heads of garlic. But if you guys have any information on that, please share it. From the little bit that I understand or research, that's what I understand. It's kind of a two year cycle. And so hopefully by throwing all those baby little garlics back in here, I'm gonna be perpetuating that two year cycle. Let's keep going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the garlic scapes. I can see one right there. What I did last year with the garlic scapes is I dried them and I used them like onion powder. I planted a whole bunch of hard nut garlic over here and I don't see any of the scapes coming out yet, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to harvest a ton of those garlic scapes soon. But I don't know because this is my first year gardening, I don't really know when, oh, we passed the cilantro, when those are supposed to come up. So this is the cilantro and I'm really glad I came out here because some of it looks like here, it's about to bolt. I'm actually gonna taste this. It's been in the 80s, which is pretty toasty for us for May. So I'm gonna taste this and see. Mm, mm hmm it still tastes really. I just retasted this cilantro and it's not good. I tasted it yesterday and it tasted just fine, but I'm pretty sure this is bolted now and I love cilantro. It's probably cilantro and basil are my two favorite herbs. And it tasted sweet yesterday. And I have this like burny, soapy feeling on the end of my tongue. And this isn't edible. <laughs> so I did miss the cilantro. What I'm gonna do is this is not a loss. We are gonna grow coriander now. And this is what I did last year with the cilantro that bolted. I was hoping to get some cilantro to dehydrate because that would have been a good amount of cilantro to dehydrate but we are gonna grow coriander now. Coriander and cilantro are the same plant. I'm sitting here harvesting spinach out of this little spinach patch I have, and I did taste it because I was worried that it had kind of bolted and was gonna be bitter too, but this tastes really good. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna pull all these plants up and plant something else here, or if I'm gonna let them grow a little bit more. I think, well, because I've got right there, I've got a pumpkin and right behind where I'm sitting, if I don't sit in it. I've got a pumpkin plant right there too. And I'm trying to decide if I want to give those plants a little bit more space or if I want to see if I can get any more spinach to grow off this. What would you guys do? I think this is my plan. I'm going to get as many leaves off as I can. Oh, well, I just pulled that up. So we'll let that compost in place. 
And if I can get some more leaves off it, great. If not, if I feel like it's just about to bolt, I'm probably stressing these plants out by harvesting so much at one time. Then I'll pull them up and I'll give more room for the winter squash. This is a lot of spinach. I didn't realize how much spinach I had out here. This is really fun. This is super relaxing. I, I kind of have been putting this off for some reason. I've been putting off these harvests. Uh, I probably should have started doing this a week ago. And I don't know why because, oh, I pulled up another plant. So I think I just needed to get out here and do this and now I have the harvesting bug. Oh, see, I didn't sit on it. Here's my, this is a Cinderella pumpkin right here. I did pull up a few plants and I think I'm gonna pull a few more up. I'm gonna go give these to the chickens just to give it a little bit more space. Oh yeah. I just realized their water's out. So let me first off get them more water because, oh, get, get out of there. Don't get in my bed. So this little guy has found the taste of fertilizer bone meal. I've been, I put some homemade bone meal around my tomato plants. That's not the first time I've caught him licking up the bone meal around my plants. I have spinach in one other area, so we're gonna get that next. I have spinach planted all along this edge and all along that edge. I'm gonna do the cut and come again method because these aren't about to bolt anytime soon. And you just take the plant and you cut right around it, but you make sure you don't get the center and then it'll keep growing for you. I have two broccoli plants here that look like they're ready to be harvested. It almost looks like they're about to go to seed. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest both of those and I'm gonna harvest the leaves. You can eat broccoli leaves just like you eat kale. So that's another way, two for the price of one, broccoli leaves and broccoli because you really, for the space, you really don't get very much produce when you're gardening broccoli because, well, especially mine, because mine are small, but I wanna make sure I maximize the space, so I wanna get both harvests. We have one more spot where there is spinach planted. Now, these ones I am gonna pull because they definitely have bolted. I just wanna do a taste test. Okay, they taste fine. So I'm gonna harvest the leaves to eat for us. And then the plant I'll pull, those will go to the chickens just like before. There's definitely a theme here. And then I'm gonna come back and plant some carrots in this area. There is pollen. I don't know if you can see that dust coming off these plants, but there is pollen just pouring off them. I just ran inside and we're gonna get these carrots planted in this area. Let's go ahead and harvest some dill now. All this is chives. Let's get these chives trimmed back. I've got a couple basil plants over here. I did take two little basil plants. I really liked having those chives there because the flowers were super pretty and I'm gonna miss that, but they'll come back. But it was shading out the basil and I really wanna make sure I get basil. So that's why I trimmed those chives back. So now I have to go to a different part of my property to go under these trees and we are gonna harvest a ton of mint. There's a bunch more oregano in this area and mint, but I'm gonna leave this oregano, I think, and just harvest the mint. This here is traditional mint and I have some strawberry mint back at the main garden that we're gonna go harvest now too. I forgot about that actually. This is my beautiful strawberry mint here. I'm just gonna give it a nice haircut. That's all I'm gonna be harvesting for now. I've got these two baskets, that bowl, and then the other big bowl over there. Let's head inside and start dealing with some of this stuff. All right, it's all inside now. This is a lot. Let me think how we're gonna deal with this first. So not all of this is gonna fit in the dehydrator. So this is gonna take multiple cycles. All I'm gonna do is take the leaves off the stem. You can dry it on the stem, but you're either gonna take the leaves off the stem now or you're gonna take the leaves off the stem later. This is an Excalibur Dehydrator 5 tray. I absolutely love this dehydrator. I wish I had 
three of them. I What I would like to have is that 15 tray one, but that's way out of my budget. And so we're gonna try to get all this mint on here. If you follow me on Instagram, which is at Acre Homestead, I'm pretty active over there. I post almost every day in my story, so you can kind of see what I'm doing on a daily basis. But I just weeded an entire front area of my property. I have four more strawberry mint plants that I started from seed indoors. And I think what I'm gonna do is take that mint and plant it over, it's looking planted in that area that I weeded because I would love if that mint would take over that area because I know mint is just, it can be noxious, it can take over anything. But honestly, I would actually really like it if it did that because then I wouldn't have to weed it as much. <laughs> Harvesting this mint for two reasons. I wanna make soap, I wanna make mint eucalyptus soap and I wanna put some of the dried mint in it. I think that would be really cool. And then obviously for tea, I wanna make some mint tea. So my plan is to be harvesting mint all through summer. This is just the first harvest. Next up is the dill and strawberry mint. I'm not gonna de-stem the strawberry mint because it's much younger and these stems are really tender. So I think that if I make tea out of them, I'm not worried about the stems at all. And I'm gonna put the dill here. Up next is chives. You can eat the flowers but these flowers are about to go to seed, so I'm gonna take them off. I'm not fancy about trying to get a very, very thin layer or anything. I just try to get them on here and do a nice thin layer, but not exactly a one layer. All right, that is full. We have two layers of regular mint, one layer of strawberry mint and dill, and two layers of chives. Because these are herbs, I'm gonna set the heat to 95. I'm just gonna let this go overnight. I'm gonna set it for 20 hours, but when I get up in the morning, I'll check it. If it's done, I'll turn it off before I go to work. So this may seem a little bit weird, but these onion tops, what I'm gonna do is wrap them up in a towel so they don't get weird in the fridge. I'm actually not going to make that onion top pesto until next week. That will be a different video, but I want them to last in the fridge for the next week. They did get a little bit wilty because I harvested them when it was pretty warm out but I think they're gonna be just fine in the fridge. So I'm just doing kind of a little bit of a single layer here. These are gonna go in the fridge for next week. The rest of these onions and these onions are gonna be chopped up and we're gonna put them in freezer bags. when you're preserving food and doing all this stuff but it's so worth it because what I'm doing is now these onion tops like I mentioned before earlier I'm going to be using them in recipes just like I would regular onions so because I have them chopped and in the freezer all I'm going to do is chop them put them in a freezer bag and throw them in the freezer it saves me time actually when I go to cook recipes because now my onions are already chopped So I just had an idea. This is an old window screen that my dogs chew a hole in. And last time I tried drying herbs, air drying them, I tried drying them inside and I wasn't really happy with how dry they got. I dried them in my laundry room and I just don't think laundry room gets as dry as you want it. It's supposed to be in the high 80s and 90s this week. So I have this under my covered porch and I think I'm just gonna try drying this oregano right out here. The idea of having to try to get this going, all of this through my food dehydrator seemed really daunting because this is a lot of oregano. So if this works, I'm gonna be really thrilled. Because I'm drying this outside, I definitely am trying to do a single layer here. I don't wanna overlap it too much at all. I really like this apron I got. The only thing I don't like is when you bend over because it doesn't have ties that go around the back, it gapes like this. So it's not my favorite when it comes to that, but when I'm just working, in the kitchen, I really like it. But I guess it's not my favorite out, oop, out in the garden because I bend over a lot when I'm out in the garden. So I have four bags of onions that are gonna head to that deep freeze in the garage. And then I do have one bag of onions that's gonna go in, that's gonna go in this freezer right here. I do reuse my freezer bags when at all possible. And this was a reused freezer bag. So because it's been used once, the integrity is not quite as good as these ones. So this is gonna be the one we're gonna go through first. So we have two empty baskets and now we just have 
this spinach. Now we don't always wash my garden produce when it comes in because it's usually pretty clean, but this spinach was covered in pollen and it really needs a good washing. So let's get to that. As with the onions, I don't do anything special. I'm gonna freeze the spinach. I don't cook it first, I don't do anything. I just wash it and I'm gonna stick it in a freezer bag and we're gonna throw it in the freezer. When the spinach freezes or kale, I do kale the same way, it kind of crumbles apart when you put it in recipes and it works out perfect. So I have two bags of spinach here I'm gonna throw in the freezer and I'm gonna call it a night. I am pooped, it is now 9.02, so I've been at this for a while. I'm really glad that I decided to do that outdoor dehydrator method. I'll let you guys know tomorrow how it's going. Welcome back friends. So I think I said that I was gonna see you the next day. It's literally been a week since I was dealing with this dried herbs. These have been sitting on my counter for the last week and I just haven't really thought about them. Now I did have one thought because they're all dried and nice, except for, I'll show you. So I have never dehydrated, what are these called, chives before. And I had them actually in the dryer for two days and I had them turned on and they all turned brown and just not super appetizing. And some of them still feel a little bit like there's moisture left in them. So these are gonna be composted. I'm actually gonna throw these around some of my winter and summer squash just to help them protect, be protected from slugs. I've noticed that slugs don't love onions. They will eat them a little bit, but I figured I'll let it just kind of compost in the ground and hopefully be a little bit of a slug deterrent. Now, I did have another thought um, this week because as you know, I, on this tray, had done strawberry mint here and dill here. And I did mint on the top two shelves, I'm making a mess, for tea. The first time I opened the drawer, you could smell the dill and you could kind of smell the chives. And how gross would it be to make tea that smells like dill and chives? <laughs> so, uh, beginner error here, because I'm still new to tea making and um, this is only my second year like really dehydrating. Funny story actually, people ask, you know, how did you get into this? What like made you want to do these things like grow herbs and dehydrate and preserve food and blah, 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 blah. I've kind of always been into it. I think for like my 11th, when I was 11 or 12 for Christmas, I may have been younger than that. I really, really, really wanted a food dehydrator. And how many 12 year olds want food dehydrators? I used to go to tutoring for reading when I was really young. And the lady who was tutoring me, she had a food dehydrator and she every year would dehydrate peaches and apples and um, she, she would give some to me because I'd go to her house for the tutoring and I would snack on them and they were so good. And ever since then, I told my parents like for Christmas, I really wanted a food dehydrator and I finally got one one year. So I've kind of always been into this stuff and I did have a food dehydrator growing up, but this is my first year really. All that to say, that was a long backstory, but all that to say, I don't think you should be dehydrating dill and chives and mint that you want for tea all in one session. Because I think you want to dehydrate your dill or chives, I think those would be fine together. But if you wanna dehydrate something for tea, you wanna make sure that you don't have any other really potent herbs in there. I, I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but I'm dehydrating this mint also for soap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mark this jar mint for soap. So it's not gonna be like a loss on the mint or anything like that. It's just gonna be something to note for the future. And now I just have probably plenty of mint to make soap out of. I do have one recipe. Um, if you wanna watch a video of me making soap, I have one video up on that and I can link that above and below. Now I wanted to also mention that I forgot that there was one more thing I was gonna harvest last week and I forgot. So we're gonna head out and harvest one more thing. And that's some rose petals because I wanna make some soap with rose petals. So I think this smells really good. I think I might try it and make some tea and see if it's a loss for tea, see if the dill and chives kind of overtook that flavor or if it's gonna be fine. 
Sorry about the mess behind me. Um, I just finished making a bunch of onion top pesto. So let me just clean this up a little bit and then we're gonna go run and talk about the oregano and how well or how well it didn't do. I'll let you know. I think with those chives, they were just overripe. I'm gonna try dehydrating. See, like this one turned out perfect. But there's just so many of these like little sad limp brown ones. So I don't know. Like I could technically probably save this and there's a few in here that I could salvage. But it seemed like a lot of work to have to like go through all that. So I think I'm just gonna compost that. If you guys have ever dehydrated chives before, please let me know what I did wrong with that. My thinking is that the chives were either, I harvested them too late because you know how the flowers were all like woody and going to seed or I don't know. I don't know what I did, so we won't give up though. We'll try again. All right, so let's go run out and talk about the oregano. The oregano did really well. It's been sitting out here for a week. Like I had said, it's been literally a week since I was out here and it's pretty dry. So what we're gonna do is take all the oregano off the stems and then I think I wanna dehydrate it just a little bit more in the dehydrator to make sure that it's fully dry. So we got our bowl here and let's go ahead and get all this oregano inside. super dry to me. I do not think I need to throw this in the dehydrator. I think it was because it was outside and it's kind of cold today that when they were, when I was feeling them out there, they felt like they weren't fully dry, but these are fully dry, I'm pretty sure. On the side of my house here, I have a ton of rose bushes. Please ignore the weeds. I know it's really bad. Last year I didn't do anything with them and then I had the thought, I need to collect these rose petals to make soap with. I'm gonna try to do two things with the petals. I'm gonna try to make dye to dye the soap pink and then I thought it would be pretty if I dried them and I either like blend them up into the, the soap and have those little flecks like I did with the calendula soap or also to like dye the entire soap pink or to put the little petals on the top of the soap. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna be doing with them, but the ones that are kind of opening and already starting to, you know, they're either gonna go into my basket to be dehydrated or they're gonna go on the ground and compost. I figured I might as well harvest these and get them into my basket and try to do something with them. I'm dropping them. So I want to show you my freezer in the door here. This is the freezer that's in my pantry. I have 12 pints of onion top pesto that I just made. I did make a whole separate video on this video. I'm not sure if the harvest video or the onion top pesto video is coming out first, but that's what we got from the onions that I wrapped up in the towel. And I just made that this morning. So those onions were in the refrigerator wrapped up in that towel for an entire week and they were just fine. We've got our herbs here. This is a whole, well, this is a half gallon of oregano a quart of mint, and just a little bit of dill. I'm really hoping I get a lot more dill. I love dill. Dill is so good. I love putting dill in potato salad, in egg salad, in making homemade ranch. That's kind of like the main flavor in ranch. And I was thinking as I was cutting this up, wouldn't it be really good to make your own homemade ranch powder? You know how you can buy those like ranch powder packets? I just had a thought that when I was cutting this, that would be really good and that would be a really good Christmas gift. My sisters both love the ranch powder from Penzi's, but I think it'd be kind of fun if I could make them some as Christmas gifts myself. Thanks guys for hanging out with me today as I harvested a bunch of herbs. I can't wait to see what this year holds and how much stuff I'm gonna be able to get out of the garden and preserve up. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more, go ahead and subscribe or there'll be some videos that'll pop up here if you wanna watch those. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.